A boy swims due west at a speed of 0.8 meters per second. A girl swims at 0.4 meters per second in the direction alpha degrees south of west. At a certain instant, the girl is 10 meters 60 degrees north of west of the boy, and uh, 10 seconds later, she is due north of the boy. In the first question, we are going to get the distance traveled by the boy and the girl in 10 seconds. Well, in one second, the girl travels 0.4 meters because her speed is 0.4 meters per second. So in 10 seconds, she will travel 10 times 0.4, which is 4 meters. Okay, so this is just time multiplied by constant speed gives us distance traveled. Similarly for the boy, in one second he covers 0.8 meters, so in 10 seconds he covers 10 times 0.8 is 8 meters. So for constant speed, distance traveled is our... Um, um, constant speed is distance traveled divided by time taken, so we just multiply uh, constant speed by time taken to get the distance traveled. So this is the situation after 10 seconds. So t equals naught, the girl is here, and the boy is here. Now here is the picture at t equals 10. We are given that the girl is due north of the boy, so this angle is 90 degrees. In part two, we want to find the value of angle alpha. Now, this is trickier than it actually looks. I mean, we have a quadrilateral here. We have the three sides and we have two angles of it. You might be tempted to try and uh, divide this quadrilateral into two triangles and work with both triangles. Actually, we can find this side of this bigger triangle because we have two sides and the angle in between. We could use the cosine rule to find this side here. Then we would have two sides of this smaller triangle. However, we don't have any angles in the smaller triangle. So we would have to go and get this angle using this triangle here. You know, two sides, angle in between. Enough information to give us this angle. So to take this angle from 90 degrees to find this one in here. Now, we could then go and mark in this angle because we have these two. Uh, this angle out here is 60 degrees, the same as this one here. We have a pair of Z angles. And eventually we would end up finding angle alpha. It's quite involved, but there is a much quicker way. Uh, the clever trick here is to actually divide the quadrilateral into a right angle triangle and this other quadrilateral, which is actually a trapezium because this side is parallel to this side. Anyway, what we do is we use the fact that this side added onto this side here must give us 8. First of all, what is this side? Well, it's the side adjacent to 60 degrees in this right angle triangle, so it's just 10 times cos 60. Now, what about this distance here? Well, it's actually the same as this distance up here. Okay, if I draw this line parallel to this line, we form a pair of z angles, and now you see we can bring alpha degrees in. Okay, this line's parallel to this, and we've right angle triangle formed here. We have the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So the side adjacent to alpha is 4, the hypotenuse multiplied by the cos of alpha. And these two must add up to 8. Now, it's straightforward to solve this equation. There's only one unknown, cos alpha. Cos alpha works out to be 3 quarters. From that, we get alpha equals 41.41 degrees. So now we know the the direction that the girl swims in. Um, so her velocity is fully specified actually. We have her speed 0.4 and now we have her. Now to answer part 3 we need to get the velocity of the boy and the velocity of the girl. I'm talking about absolute velocities here or the velocities relative to a fixed axis. The velocity of the boy is straightforward because he moves in the negative i direction with a constant speed of 0.8 meters per second. So his velocity is minus 0.8 i. There is no j component. Let's get the velocity of the girl. Well, um, if we look up here, here's her velocity vector. We can see that the i component is negative. To get the magnitude of the i component, we multiply the hypotenuse, which is 0.4, by the cos of angle alpha. And in the previous part, we worked out that the cos is 3 quarters. Now we need a minus sign here because the i component is negative. So it's minus 0.4 times 3 quarters i. Now we can see that the j component of vg, this vector here is vg, is negative as well. The magnitude of it is 
the hypotenuse 0.4 times sine alpha. Okay, so let's get sine of alpha. Now we could just get alpha and get the sine of it using the calculator, but I'll just uh, get it using a diagram. So alpha is an acute angle. If we make a part of a right angle triangle, then the ratio of adjacent hypotenuse must be 3 over 4. We then use Pythagoras' theorem to get the side opposite alpha. That's going to be the square root of 4 squared minus 3 squared. That's the square root of 16 minus 9. Um, that's root 7. Um, so the sine of alpha is root 7 over 4. So to get the magnitude of the j component, we multiply the hypotenuse, which is 0.4, by root 7 over 4, and we stick in the minus sign because the j component is negative. J component is pointing down. So I've written down the j component here to four decimal places. It probably would have been just as quick to get inverse cos of alpha, which we saw before as 41.41, and then just get the sign of the result. Now in part three, we want the shortest distance between the boy and the girl in the subsequent motion. So this kind of problem we covered in a previous video, and uh, to answer it, we need to get the relative velocity vector. Now it doesn't matter whether we get the velocity of the girl relative to the boy, VGB, or we get the other one, the velocity of the boy relative to the girl. Okay, I'll work with this one here. So we know that that's given by VG minus VB. So if we subtract the I components, we have minus 0.3 minus minus 0.8, that's uh, plus 0.5. And then we did subtract the j components, so we take this component here, minus uh, 0.2646j, and subtract 0. Well, that'll just give us minus 0.2646j. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the initial situation. Since uh, we have the relative velocity vector, we know, and we can now uh, consider what happens at from t equals naught. Okay, at t equals naught, the boy is here, and the girl is here. The velocity of the girl is in this direction here, but we're not interested in that. We want the girl's velocity relative to the boy. Notice that the i component is positive, plus 0.5i. However, the j component is negative, so the uh, vector vgb will look like what's in this picture here. Okay. Um, so if we project on here, we can see that the I component is positive. It's actually plus 0.5. Things are not drawn to scale here, as you can see. Um, well, actually, this is more like the path of the girl is seen by the boy. Um, but it looks like we're referring to the vector VGB. Okay, so if it's the vector, then this component is 0 0.5. And this component here has magnitude 0.2646. If we want to draw it to scale, I suppose it should look a lot smaller. This, this is what VGB looks like. Positive Y component, negative J component. So if, if we imagine an axis centered at B, of course it's moving with B, so this is a moving IJ axis, then G will appear to move in this direction. So as seen by the boy, the path of the girl is along here, and uh, we want the shortest distance be between the boy and the girl. So at some time, uh, the girl will be here, and this line is perpendicular to this line. So we want this distance here, the shortest distance of this point to the path of the girl. So at t equals naught, the girl is here, a distance of 10 from the boy, and we have this angle of 60 degrees. Uh, that means that we have this angle here. This angle here must also be 60 degrees, okay? So this angle and this angle form a pair of z angles, or alternate angles. Since vector VGB is fully specified, we can uh, get the angle between vector VGB and the x-axis. All right, let's call this angle theta. So here I'm showing vector VGB and the magnitude of its two components. Okay, we can work out this angle here, which I'm calling theta, by getting the inverse tan of 0.2646 over 0.5, that's 27.89 degrees. 
So now we can get an angle inside this right angle triangle and from that we can find this distance here. So angle A is 60 minus 27.89, that's 32.11. So to get this distance which I'm calling D, we multiply the hypotenuse which is 10 by the sine of angle A. To one decimal place we get 5.3 meters. Okay, that's the question done. Now as an aside, I'm going to get the time taken for the, the two people to be within the shortest distance of each other. To do that, we need the speed of the girl relative to the boy. We have her velocity. So to get the speed of the girl relative to the boy, we just use Pythagoras. Get the magnitude of vector V uh, GB. So, from the boy's perspective, the girl appears to be swimming with a speed of 0.66, sorry, 0.566 meters per second in this direction. Now we need the distance that she travels to go from here to this point X. So we just use Pythagoras here because we have two sides of this right angle triangle. We get the square root of the hypotenuse squared minus D squared. The two decimal places, that's 8.48 meters. Now at last we can get the time taken, I'll call it T. Um, so um, since she's traveling with constant speed as seen by the boy, constant speed is distance traveled over time taken. So the time taken is the distance traveled divided by the speed. Now if you're worried about mixing these up, the units will have to come out right, you know, the meters cancel out and uh, we have division by S in the denominator, so we have to multiply above and below by S, so our answer will come out in seconds. So that's the correct unit of time, so we know that this formula is correct. We get an answer of 15 seconds.